The world was not run by the forces that we thought it was run by. If you think of a pyramid, at the top of the pyramid you've got a tiny few people which we now have a name for, the 1%. If you look at how a handful of people now have the same wealth as the poorest half of the population, you can see the 1%. At the bottom of this pyramid is pretty much the rest of humanity in deprivation. And this is the word independence of the 1% because they don't have independent income. Between the 1% and the rest of the population, it is pretty much designed to be a vicious police military state to impose the will of the 1% upon the population and to stop the population rebelling against the 1%. Just to finish the point, this pyramid structure, the Hunger Games Society, I've been saying it for so long, is designed to be run not by elected politicians, but by technocrats. Around the year 2030, humans will start to have their brains connected to AI. Now, if you look at that, mate, and then you look at the consequences of current events, then you can see that that Hunger Games society is vastly closer now than it was only weeks ago when this whole virus hysteria began. If you said to people, when you look through your eyes, can you see everything that exists in the space you're looking at? What they're going to say, they're going to say yes, but they can't. What we call the world is a ridiculously narrow band of frequency called visible light in the electromagnetic spectrum. According to mainstream science, the electromagnetic spectrum and visible light, which is the only world reality that we can see, is a smear of the electromagnetic spectrum. That spectrum, never mind visible light, represents about 0.005% of what exists in the universe. So we don't live in a world. We live in a band of frequency which our body brain can decode into a reality, a holographic reality. Therefore, infinity exists outside this narrow band of frequency. But we can't see it, just as when you're tuned to a radio station or a television station, you only experience that frequency, that station, that reality. What happens when you switch the zapper is you switch to a different, if you like, frequency. And you get a different reality instantly. We call them different channels. Now, these different realities operate in different bands of frequency. And just like radio frequencies, etc., these bands of frequency, as long as they're not too close on the dial to each other when you get interference, they can share the same space without affecting all the others. And each one not even being aware that all the others exist. So we are basically experiencing a holographic television channel, which we call the world. And outside of that, are all the other realities of infinite reality. Only when these realities get close on the dial do you get interference. And one of those areas of interference is what we call ghosts and paranormal things and such like. They can expand their frequency range that they can connect with beyond the normal range of human frequency and they can tap into frequencies that are outside of the normal human range. You can pick up information from outside there that's not available here. Anybody can do it. It's just that this cult doesn't want us to do it. That's why we're constantly pressured to perceive the world only through the five senses, which means only through this narrow band of frequency called physical light. To understand what's going on, we have to have some understanding of the nature of reality. Because if we don't, we will quite understandably dismiss things that are happening, but we can't perceive how they could happen. You believe the world is actually 
solid. Our bodies are solid. That wall is solid. And not a holographic, illusory physical. Then if the world is solid, then people moving between different shapes, what they call shape-shifting, is impossible. You can't shape-shift solidity. It's ridiculous. But if you believe the world is solid, immediately you hear some of the things that I say. They're immediately dismissed. Not possible. Well, hold on. If you look at computers and the technological Wi-Fi world we live in now, what you're looking at is a technological reality that mimics real reality, our experience reality, and how we create. So you've got a Wi-Fi field. Okay, where is it? Where's the Wi-Fi field? Point it out to me. Well, I can't because you can't see it. Right. Now, if you didn't know about computers, and I said to you, there is a field of information that we're living in like a sea, people would say, well, where is it? I can't see it. Therefore, it can't exist. But because people know about computers, you say, you know there's a field of information and you can decode. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know about that Wi-Fi. That's right. And the only difference between that's rubbish, mate, and oh, yeah, I know about that is knowledge. Knowledge of what you are experiencing and what you're talking about in terms of reality. So what does a computer do? You've got a Wi-Fi field full of information in the form of radiation, basically. And the computer decodes it onto the screen. And you say to people, and it codes it onto the screen, by the way, on the basis of the information you put in to decode onto the screen, what you choose to decode. You say to people, tell me about the internet. And they say, oh yeah, well, it's pictures and graphics and text and all that stuff with websites. Yes, it is, but only on the screen. On the screen is the only place the internet exists in that form. Everywhere else, it's electronic codes and Wi-Fi. We decode reality in exactly the same way. The five senses take waveform information, think Wi-Fi, turn it into electrical information, feed it into the brain, and there are different parts of the brain that specialize in decoding the different senses. The brain decodes that electrical information into holographic digital information. And that is what we experience as the world around us. It's not around us, it's inside us, all of us. Just as the internet is inside this computer and we look at it from afar. So say you're tasting something, you don't taste it with the tongue, you taste it via the tongue, which sends electrical information representing the taste to the brain, which decodes it, and then it becomes yummy, or that's horrible. There are now pain relief techniques used in hospitals where they stop the message going from the point of pain to the brain, because if they stop that, the brain cannot decode the message and you can't feel pain. Take the hearing senses. What's passing between us and what passes between all of us where we're communicating are not words. They're wave field frequency fields generated by the vocal cords. These are picked up by the ears that turn them into electrical information. Feed it to the brain. And only when the brain decodes it do you hear words. Give you an example. Does a falling tree make a noise? Well, only if you hear it. And what I mean by that is, if a tree falls, what it's doing is, it's an electromagnetic field, and it is causing a disturbance in the wider electromagnetic field as it moves. If there's no one there to decode that disturbance then a falling tree doesn't make a noise. If there is someone there, they pick up that disturbance with the ears, that electromagnetic disturbance, 
and they decode it into the sound of a tree falling. It's all an illusion, and this is what they don't want us to know because they know it is. And they're manipulating the illusion to control human beings. But to do that, they've got to keep from us that it is an illusion. So the human body is a field of information, and we are decoding these fields. We decode the body into holographic reality. The body actually only exists in our decoded senses. In its other form, it's an electromagnetic field of information. So it's not solid, it's holographic. 